wonderful this day is. Wow, this is the best day of your life. You say, well, I don't know it is. Yes, it is because Jesus lives big in you today. Let's let him do things in you you never thought were possible. Let's get the mind of Christ. And I want to give you a scripture God gave me for this program. I just love it. Oh, it's John 8, 12. You say, well, it won't apply to me. Oh, yes, it will. It applies to every one of you. And John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but in the light of life. You are not going to walk in darkness today. You're going to have the light for your life. That's what Jesus said to you. And that's one of the major reasons you turned on this program was to hear that. Now, let me just share a testimony of what Jesus can do in all kinds of circumstances. And I love this. This is from Priscilla. She says, thank you, Marilyn, for being a great blessing in my life from the year 2004. I got married and moved to the U.S. in 2003. I got to know you through Daystar. While coming back from India last week on the flight from Dubai to LAX, I shared the gospel to a Muslim gentleman. He was very glad when I offered him your book, Bulldog Faith, How to Hold On and Never Let Go. Thanks, Marilyn, for your ministry. May the Lord keep you as the apple of his eye. I like that. Is that sweet? Have we heard from you? We just love to hear from you. This is very encouraging. And Sarah, I love all of our partners. Right. You know, partners, I pray for you every day. You are such a blessing to us, and you help us to reach. Listen, how important you are over two billion people every weekday. Is that awesome? That is awesome. And today you're going to share a special thing about how to maximize your day God's way. Don't waste it, honey. He's got wisdom for you today. And mom, one of the things you start off with in chapter two is you talk in here about catch a vision. Oh yeah. Catch a vision. What are you trying to do? Where are you going? What's the vision? Because where you look is where you go. Right. And whatever you're looking at is where you wind up going. So I was thinking about this because I was thinking in relation to Martha and Mary. And I love Martha and Mary because there's such a classic example of, of us as women. You know, we always tend to get busy and doing stuff. And, and uh, Martha and Mary have Jesus over to their house for dinner. And I think this is the, really the first time we read about Jesus interacting with them. And it's in Luke chapter 10, and it's towards the end of the chapter. And in this chapter, they invite him over for dinner. And, and it's interesting because Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to Jesus teach. And this is a little bit of a problem because particularly in this culture at this time, women were not, so to speak, students, weren't considered learners. Men were learners, men were students, but women, and you may not like this, I don't really care for it either, but women at this time were considered, you're supposed to stay in the kitchen, cook and clean and have babies. That was kind of the mindset. But Mary was defying that mindset by sitting at Jesus' feet. And she was listening to Jesus as a learner and as a student. Martha wasn't happy about that. Martha came up to Jesus and said, dude, I got a bulletload of work I'm trying to get done here. We're having you over for dinner and she's not doing anything to help me. Make her get busy and let's get rolling. We got stuff to do. You know, we're making the pot roast, we're peeling carrots, we got to cut, chop up the salad. You know, that's just kind of my, my version on it. But it's interesting that Mary said, I'm going to make Jesus my priority, my vision. And Martha was more concerned about accomplishing the meal. And Jesus replied to Martha in verse 42 says, 41 and 42, Martha, Martha, you're worried and bothered about a lot of things, but only one thing is necessary for Mary has chosen the good part and it won't be taken from her. The one thing, one thing. And I think sometimes in our modern world, if you're like me, we have so many things that compete for our attention. I mean, think about it. You got to do grocery shopping. You got kids. You got to get to places. You got all these events you got to do, responsibilities, all these things you got to juggle. And you could keep yourself up 24 hours and still not get everything done. And there's so many competing priorities and voices and all this stuff. But family, if we don't take, take our own time, if we don't take the initiative, if we don't take charge, if we don't focus and be intentional about our vision, 
then we're going to become victims of all those competing priorities. And Jesus said, there's only one thing that's necessary. And Mary has chosen the better thing. And I think with all the things that compete for us and compete for our attention, our energy, our time, our focus, I mean, whether it's you get alerts on your phone, this or that, or, you know, the TV's going, the radio's going, the kids are talking, you're getting phone calls and text messages and all this stuff. And then the, the roast is burning and the gravy's going, you know, all this is just, it just melts into like oblivion. You're like, this is just a failure. But I think we really have to think about what's the one thing. Why, what's our, what is our goal in life? What are we trying to achieve? And I would say in this book, I love this book because it talks about maximizing your day. But if we don't know what's the goal, what are we trying to do? What's our purpose? Why are we on this planet? And I learned this growing up and this was something the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart. And the Holy Spirit has brought this to me again and again and again and again, the one thing. And I was reading about this and I love this verse in, in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, the wealthy man in his wealth or the successful man in his achievements, but let him who boasts, boast that he knows me. And this is the same way of a commendation that Jesus gave to Mary. He said, she has set up the priority in her life to know me to sit here and make me her priority, her essential, her one thing, the vision. And we can accomplish all these things, but family, at the end of the day, if we don't know Jesus, if we don't grow in our walk with Jesus, if that's not ground zero, if that's not why we live to know Jesus and to let Jesus be known through us, then we're going to miss that one thing. We're going to fritter our lives off into no, nothing significant, important and, and long lasting, eternal. So I would encourage you today, maybe you've gotten distracted and kind of waylaid. You have all these competing priorities and today you need to kind of reevaluate, kind of reshuffle those things and say, yep, the one thing. I turned into Martha for a little while, but I need to be Mary. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would help you to reshuffle those priorities and keep the one thing. And I thought this was super powerful too. In Micah 6 verse 8, it says, what does God require of us? Because if we think about vision, what does God what does God expect from us? What, what is, I mean, because at the end of the day, if we achieve what God expects from us, <laughs> that's, that's a successful life. That's a total bonus. And in Micah 6 verse 8, it says, God asks three things of you. Number one, do justice. Do the right thing. Have integrity. Be a person of character. And look out for the people that are, that are like not as, uh, that are victims, that are not, that don't have access to legal things and, and do justice. Love mercy, number two, love mercy. I think that's such a powerful thing. In fact, I was reading in Proverbs eleven seventeen. it says, the cruel man is mean to himself, but the merciful man does good to himself. When we're merciful, it's good for our hearts, good for our souls. But when we're judgmental and tolerant and harsh, cruel, it's hurtful to us. And in Micah 6, 8, love, mercy, do justice. And the third thing, walk humbly with God. What does God want you to do? We can, we, you can do all these achievements. You can have all these accolades. You can have all these positions and honors and all these accolades and all these things that are amazing. But at the end of the day, if we don't set and prioritize in our life, knowing Christ. And I read it the other day in Philippians 3, 10. I want to know Christ, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, for whose sake I have lost all things. We, we are born, we are created to know and fellowship and commune with our creator. This is the end of the story. Now, am I telling you to turn into a monk or a nun and kind of just like stop living? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So how do we do this integrating knowing God, knowing Jesus into our daily living? Because I, <laughs> that's a really big question. You know, Martha, Mary, you still got the roast. You still got all the laundry. Oh my goodness. You still got 10 shirts you got to iron. You still got to mop the floor. You still got to vacuum. You still got to do all this stuff. So how do you do all of that and know Jesus? How do we integrate those two? How do we make that cooperative instead of competitive. And I would encourage you, this book is super helpful to help you kind of navigate that balance, to walk in that. So hop on the phone, get on the website, I encourage you to get a couple copies because obviously 
you and I, we both have friends that not only for, would this be helpful to us, but also for our friends. So grab a couple of copies on this. But I'm going to talk to you about how to, how to bring integration, how to bring balance to knowing God. That's priority. That's vision. That's why we live. This, is, this frames our existence, our purpose, knowing God. But then how do we do that in the context of the day-to-day -day grind? right? <laughs> Running kids to soccer games, picking them up, making muffins for the class here, or, to, or cookies, or uh, I've got to do, deal with my husband, or I've got all this responsibility, church stuff that I volunteered for. How do, I, how do I navigate all these things and still keep my priority of loving Jesus and knowing Jesus? I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to give you some super practical things in my life that have helped me as well. So hop on the phone, get on the website, and, and we want to pray for you that God would help you on this. Because this is a question I get asked almost all the time, balance. Sarah, how do you balance everything? <laughs> you're a wife, you're a daughter, you're a mom, you got all the stuff, you got Saving Moses stuff, you travel. How do you balance all that? And you write books and you teach and you how do you balance it? And how do you keep from having a train wreck? And the truth of it is sometimes I do have a train wreck. <laughs> there are some days that just like, ah, this was a meltdown. This was absolutely a disaster. Oh my goodness, it was horrible. I remember one time I was in my dad's car and I was driving, this was recently, I was driving to, we had a board meeting on a Friday and I'm running around trying to get the kids to school on time. I'm running late and then I got the board meeting and all this. And I remember I'm driving to the board meeting and my car starts to like smoke, you know, from under the hood. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, and I can start smelling the rubber burning and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? And so I pulled in because I didn't want the car to catch on fire and start having flames out of the hood. Oh my goodness. And how do I navigate all this? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to tell you what happened. Did my car catch on fire or not? How do I balance all this stuff? I'm going to tell you here in just a minute. Do you struggle to make the Lord your first priority as you set goals and plan your daily activities? There is no doubt this may be the busiest generation that has ever lived. Rejoice! You can avoid the pressure cooker of a too busy life. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you Marilyn's book, Maximize Your Day, God's Way. In this life-changing book, Marilyn shares keys anyone can use to become a happy, productive individual, as well as an effective instrument for God. We will also send you the Maximize Your Day, God's Way 2 CD teaching set. These encouraging teachings will help you organize your priorities for God in the midst of emails, text messages, and long to-do lists. And to complete this valuable offer, we will send you Chantel Cooley's book, Stand on the Word. This book will help you meditate on the Word of God on a daily basis. Discover how managing your time will help everyday living become more enjoyable and rewarding, both here and in eternity. Call or click today for this valuable resource. says a good report makes the bones fat. I don't want to be fat, but I sure like my bones to be anointed and strong. So I'm going to give you a good report. Denise called in and she needed a car desperately. And we were praying for cars that day and someone gave her a free car. I mean, and it's a good car. It's not a lemon. We have a big God. He does big things. And let me just share with you from the book, Maximize Your Day, God's Way. I also put in my day exercise. Oh, the best thing about exercise is when it's over. But today <laughs> I will exercise. Well, when are you going to do it? When I watch the news tonight, 
I will stretch. 30 minutes of stretching. And this book will help you get your day in order, your health in order. Don't you agree? Totally good. <laughs> totally good. And you know, the whole car thing is such an an exciting adventure, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my car, you know, I was talking about how, oh. you know, like, oh, it was smoking and, you know, smelling everything. And, and what happened was I had to pull in, you know, and I turned the car off and the lights on, you know, the warning light, because this is dad's car, right, from okay. <laughs> way back in the day, almost 15 years old. And so come to find out, you know, I opened the hood and checked the radiator, you know, I waited till it cooled down some. And sure enough, I tried to pour some water in and I could hear it dribble out the bottom. And I was like, Ugh. So the car did not catch on fire, but you know, I had a friend come and collect me to get get me to the board meeting. And I mean, it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but at the end of the day, we still got done yeah. what I needed to get done, even though it wasn't the way I had thought and kind of the most efficient way. And so sometimes it happens. Sometimes you have these mishaps. And I want to give you an example. And you know, you look at mom and me, and we're both relatively healthy and we're disciplined. That's a serious important thing is being disciplined. I'm just gonna throw this in as a little rabbit trail here, but important. Um, if you're like me, we do social media, right? We got Facebook, we got Instagram, we got Twitter, we got Pinterest, we got all the stuff that we, we, that we do. But sometimes I wanna encourage you, sometimes that's a sinkhole, right? Because you're looking at all your friends' stuff and you're interacting. And, and then if things get political, that's even more of a sinkhole because you get yourself emotionally amped up about all that political stuff. And pretty soon, you're not using your time wisely. And social media should be an accessory, but not a priority. It should be nice and maybe a side thing, but it shouldn't occupy and dominate our thoughts and our time and our energy and our attention. Let's be careful. Be very careful because it can be absolutely a sinkhole. It can be quagmire, it can be quicksand, and pretty soon you're like, where did all my time go? It evaporated into social media, into non-productivity. Mm -hmm. I know this. You're like, how do you know? Well, let's not talk about how I know. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> the reality is that I know this to be true. Let's be careful about that and intentional about it. I have friends that take a break from social media. I watched this, they did it like a fast, a social media fast. I thought that's phenomenal, what a great idea. So let's be careful that it plays the right role and not a dominating role in our lives because it needs to be there to a degree, but we need to be in control of it rather than it controlling us. But you know, you look at mom and me, and mom alluded at one point about when she had parasites and went through a season that was really difficult and dark and, and challenging for her. And how do you do your time, and how do you get results when you're struggling um, and you don't feel good? And so I was thinking about that for myself because um, recently I, I was in a snowboarding accident, and it was totally my fault. I was going too fast, and uh, I was kind of too overconfident and cocky. And uh, I did a backflip accidentally. I wasn't planning to. I did a backflip and landed on my head and got a concussion. And uh, it was a pretty sturdy concussion. And it's taken me several months to recover from that concussion. But those first couple months after the concussion, I was really struggling. I was having a hard time, <laughs> hard time getting stuff done because I couldn't remember things. And it was frustrating to me. And then my emotions were struggling and frustrated. And it's just really, really difficult. So I had a friend of mine, Roger, God bless Roger. Roger's awesome, a guy in our church and he's a brain therapist. He said, you know what, sir, I'm gonna help you with this. We're gonna make this super simple. I want you to have like a card that you write down all the things you need to do and just kind of keep that whatever it is. And you can just have an ongoing card that you just keep updated and keep adding stuff to it. But then from that card, every day in the morning when you sit down, you get your coffee, because that's pretty much a routine, take whatever two things off of that card and make those the two things that you're gonna accomplish for this day. Because you got all these other competing things. You got your kids you're doing, you got your husband, you got all these stuff. So just take two things off of that card and write them on a little piece of paper, carry it with you through the day so that if when you forget, you got your paper there and it tells you what you need to do. Or you can put it on your phone, a little reminder, this is what I'm doing today, these two things. And that way, I would accumulate this long list of things I needed to do, but I didn't have to remember all of it. It was on a piece of paper, it was on the card, and then those two things for that day, and it, it helped me get things done and keep the wheels on the bus, even though my head wasn't thinking altogether clearly and I didn't have all of my mental 
faculties together. So it was super helpful to me to break it down into simple little bite-sized pieces and that was very, very helpful. And remember, there's a lot of helpful examples and, and suggestions in Maximize Your Day, God's Way. Grab it, get on the phone, get on the website, get a couple copies. It will really help you. But the other thing I would say to you as well is, I think it's super important to think about balance. Balance. Because as we go through life, there are times, seasons in our life where we have to be highly productive, high achievement. But there are also times in those seasons where we need to take a break, take a pause, step back. So let me give you an example. Last week, I, I had a huge, hectic day. I mean, I had to go to Los Angeles for the day. I had a board meeting in the evening. I had all these things I had to achieve in one day. It was packed. It was super, super dense. That day started at 4 a.m., and I didn't finish that day until around 8 or 8.30 that night. And it was pretty much continuous all the way through. So it was absolutely overwhelmingly dense and packed. And I was <laughs> more than just a little tired at the end of the day. My husband would tell you I was super tired and cranky, extremely cranky. But the next day I had to do, I was teaching that Wednesday night and service. But on Friday, you know what I did? I went snowboarding. You're like, you went snowboarding, you just had a concussion. That was a while, another season, distant season. But I took the day and I was like, you know what? God said a Sabbath rest. Mm -hmm. And rest is sometimes I think equally as essential as achievements. It's a time when we, so to speak, sharpen the saw. So I went snowboarding and it was a beautiful day. Sunny, clear, good runs. I was super careful wearing my helmet, new concussion proof snowboard, so to speak, mostly. But here's the deal, I took the time and then I rested at the end of snowboarding and I said, I'm gonna just kind of pause and I'm gonna take an exhale and catch my breath. And when I did that, when I came home that evening and, and I cooked for my family and the next day I'm cleaning the house, you know, mop and everything, but I felt energized and I had fresh vitality because I took a pause. And we see this is super, super biblical. It's called the Sabbath rest. It's the seventh day. God rested on the seventh day. It's Genesis 2 verse 3. And part of balance is, is saying, yeah, I need to rest. And for some of us, we have to, we need to kick ourselves the other way and get into achievement mode. But some of us need to kick ourselves a little bit and get into rest a little bit and, and plug in rest. So I encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you that God would help you to walk in that balance. And of course, grab your book, Maximize Your Day, God's Way. Then the final thing I would say to you is this, and I read this a couple weeks ago and it's super helpful to me. Sowing and reaping. And that's one of the chapters in here, sowing and reaping. In Ephesians 6, verses 7 and 8, it says this, With good will render service to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good thing you do, God will pay you back. And the idea of sowing and reaping, so many times we think about doing good to somebody and we want to re reap it from that same field. But if we do our services unto God, then God helps us reap across a whole plethora of fields and not just that one expectation. So when we do good, and the Bible tells us do good, and that's part of maximize your day, start part of achieving. But let's consider that God gives the return on investment. God gives the harvest. God helps us to reap. And oftentimes we reap in fields that we didn't harvest in. So I just encourage you today, you're struggling in any of your time management, struggling to get everything done that you need to get done, we would love to pray for you. We know that God has answers and to help you. Maybe not necessarily in the long, long, big scope of things, and again, framing it to know God, but maybe just in day-to-day -day wisdom. James says, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask and God will give it to him abundantly. Hop on the phone, we wanna pray for you. Do you struggle to make the Lord your first priority as you set goals and plan your daily activities? There is no doubt this may be the busiest generation that has ever lived. Rejoice! You can avoid the pressure cooker of a too busy life. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you Marilyn's book, Maximize Your Day, God's Way. In this life-changing book, Marilyn shares keys anyone can use to become a happy, productive individual as well as an effective instrument for God. We will also send you the Maximize Your Day God's Way 2 CD teaching set. These encouraging teachings will help you organize your priorities for God in the midst of emails, text messages, and long to-do lists. 
And to complete this valuable offer, we will send you Chantel Cooley's book, Stand on the Word. This book will help you meditate on the Word of God on a daily basis. Discover how managing your time will help everyday living become more enjoyable and rewarding, both here and in eternity. Call or click today for this valuable resource. a grocery list before you go to the grocery store. I have found if you don't, you get loosey-goosey, you see this, you buy this, and then you forget something. Do you agree? Yeah, totally agree. And God wants to help us prioritize and, and be effective and efficient. So I want to pray for our audience, Mom. Yes, because please. Because so many ways we get kind of fragmented in our time and our thoughts and our focus, and God wants to help us be cohesive right. and effective. So right. I want to pray for you today that that the vision God has given you for your life and knowing Christ is a part of your daily experience. No matter what's going on, that every single thing we come to know Christ more and better than we did the preceding day. So let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for speaking to us today, encouraging us with your love and also how you want to achieve through us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to integrate you throughout every day and all the things we got to do, but help us to know you in all those experiences through all those times and seasons, through all those priorities. Help us to know you and hear your voice clearly more than any other voice. Thank you for speaking to us and helping us to be effective because of your presence and your power working through us in Jesus name. Amen. And of course, I encourage you as we finish today, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy, grab a couple of copies. This would make, oh my goodness, this would make a great book for a book club, a study group, you know, a Sunday school class. This would be a phenomenal content and discussion, right? You get in a book club and you talk to each other and you're like, oh, I like this, or I didn't understand that. And having those conversations really helps to not only maximize the content from this, but also helps you to maximize your day. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple of copies, bring it into your Sunday school class or book club. And remember, we always love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer every single day. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We're so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you gotta hit the subscribe button because we wanna continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience and when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.